The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Ma, he's making eyes at me. Housewives, tomorrow's going to be a very busy day, the way Monday usually is. And that's why tomorrow would be an excellent time to let Jell-O take care of the dessert at dinner. For one of the great things about Jell-O, it's so quick and easy to get ready. It takes so little of your time. And it's pretty swell to know that any Jell-O dessert you make will meet with your family's enthusiastic approval. Jell-O, you know, is extra good because it has an exciting, extra-rich flavor. And this extra-rich flavor, this smooth, tangy goodness is really something swell, as grand and refreshing as the real juicy ripe fruit itself. Yes, a clear shining mold of tempting jello, easily and quickly prepared, would make a mighty welcome addition to your evening menu tomorrow. So order some the first thing in the morning. And uh, while you're about it, try those new jello puddings, too. Already they're the big dessert sensations of the nation. Rich, creamy, satin smooth puddings, yours to enjoy in the three popular flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. Ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O and those new delicious desserts all America's talking about, Jell-O pudding. played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the second week of leap year, we bring you a man who hasn't leaped in years, Jack Benny. Uh, hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was about the silliest thing I've ever heard. I wish that during this new year, your introductions would make a little more sense. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. I was merely trying to tie you in with leap year, that's all. Well, there must be other ways. I haven't leaped in years. What, am I supposed to be, a gazelle or something? <laughs> well, you'll have to admit, Jack, that you're not the most agile person in the world. Well, what if I'm not? You should be the last one to mention it. Any man who has to detour when he comes to an anthill, <laughs> well... <laughs> I'd be quiet if I were you. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Let me clear this up, Jack. All I meant by my introduction was that you're not the dashing athletic type like Errol Flynn or Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney? For heaven's sake, Don, Mickey Rooney is at least eight years younger than I am. <laughs> a fine comparison. Why, Jack Benny, you mean to say Mickey Rooney's only eight years younger than you are? I said he was at least eight. He might be nine or ten years younger. Or eleven. Or twelve. You ain't gonna get any place till you start to multiply. <laughs> All right, Mary, I'm 185 years old, I'm deaf as a post, I got hardening of the arteries, and I walk with a cane. Have I overlooked anything? I can't understand you. Put your teeth in. <laughs> oh, now I haven't got any teeth. It's a fine program. Hiya, Jackson. What are you so burned up about? Well, who wouldn't be? I come in here full of pep, and between Don and Mary, I'm ready for the ash can. Oh, what do you care, Jack? Your girlfriend, Gladys, thinks you're wonderful. You're darn right she does. Of course, she's not exactly a noob girl. Now, listen, Phil, there's nothing wrong with Gladys that a pair of art supporters won't fix. <laughs> I'm getting her some for her birthday. Uh, next April. Meanwhile, plop, plop, plop. <laughs> Mary, why is it every time I get a girl, you have to run her down? I'll admit that Gladys is no Hedy Lamar when it comes to looks, but she's got a lot of personality. She makes more tips than any other girl in Ginsburg's Seafood Grotto. Why not? She dies for him in the fish tank. She does not. And if you're so smart, Miss Livingston, let me tell you something about Gladys that you don't know. If the boats keep coming in like they have been, she's going to be Miss Vine Street this year. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Gladys has got a chance of being elected, Jack? Why, certainly, and that reminds me, fellas. Uh, here, fill out these studs, all of you. 
You, and you know what name to put down, Gladys. Not me. I'm voting for Mamie, the new waitress at Ginsburg. Bill Harris, you'll vote for the one I'll tell you to. I'm voting for Mamie. This is a free country. Well, you're going to see a lot of it if you don't vote for Gladys. <laughs> Right now. Okay, okay. Give me your pen, Jack. I'll vote for your girlfriend. Thanks, Mary. Me too. Gladys, huh? What's her last name, Jack? Zabisco. <laughs> Z-Y-B-Y-S-K-O. Gladys Zabisco. Hey, how do you make a Z? How do you make a... Here, give me that pencil. Look, Phil, it's like an S backward with no curve. Like that, see? Oh, yeah, that's easy. Sure. Hey, Frankie, watch me make a Z. <laughs> uh, show off later, Phil. We haven't got time. And now, uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, by the way, Phil, if you run into Mamie, uh, don't tell her I'm plugging for Gladys. I sort of half promised her. Okay, Jack, I won't mention a thing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, understand, Phil, I haven't got anything against Mamie, but I've been seeing a lot of Gladys, and she's a hot-headed, jealous type. She's got a temper like a wildcat. Yeah. Say, Jack, remember the night you punched your meal ticket in your nose? That's a lie, Mary, because Gladys never punches my meal ticket. She just makes believe. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce, uh, uh, Dennis Day, our young tenor, is going to sing an old favorite, which is still very popular, called Down by the River. Dennis? Hey, where's Dennis? Here I am, Mr. Benny, under the piano. Under the piano? What are you doing there? I'm counting the gum. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, that's a nice way to pass the time, but you've got to sing now. Uh, go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, give me those subs, fellas. I'll mail them in.
song by Dennis Day. That was excellent, Dennis. You're in very good voice tonight. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Dennis, you haven't voted for Miss Vine Street yet, have you? No, but I was planning to vote for Goldie, the cashier at the bowling alley. Oh. <laughs> well, now, Dennis, I'm not trying to influence you one way or the other, but Goldie won it last year. And besides, he hasn't got anywhere near the figure that Gladys has. Well, everybody says Gladys looks like a horse. <laughs> That's only because she's got a very long face. <laughs> and those holes she cuts in her hat for ears don't help any. Mary, you're just jealous because you're not in the contest. Now, uh, here, Dennis, uh, take this stuff and put down Gladys Zabisco. A Z-Y-B-Y-S-K-O. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, while Dennis is writing down Zabisco, Z-Y-B-Y-S-K-O, why don't you write down Jell-O, J-E-L-L-O. It is economical, easy to make, and comes in S-I-X delicious flavor. Well. So always insist on genuine Jell-O and look for the big red letters on the B-O-X. Very good, Don. Phil Harris will now spell cat. K-A-T. Excellent. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, going from our spelling bee to our feature attraction, tonight, the Benny Glee and Dramatic Club will present their version of David O. Selznick's great production. That emotional drama and tender love story filled with romance and music. None other than that supreme achievement and cinematic triumph, Intermezzo. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dreamboat. <laughs> now, I will play the part of that internationally famous concert violinist whose artistry and charm win the love of his beautiful young accompanist. This role was portrayed on the screen by that distinguished actor, Mr. Leslie Howard. Now the... Are uh, you going to play that part, Jackson? You heard me, Phil. I'm going to be Leslie Howard, a concert violinist and a great lover. Listen to them dials turn. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll handle it all right. Now, Mary, you're going to be my wife. You remember the part Edna Best had in the picture. Your wife, eh? Yes. And when this other woman comes into my life, you fight to hold me. You fight like a tigress to keep that spark of love burning between us. You're not going to sacrifice the most precious of woman's possessions, her husband. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Pardon me, I thought I was Garbo. <laughs> we should pay a little attention here. Anyway, Mary, you're my wife. And Dennis... Yes, please? Uh, you're going to be our child. You have, a, you have beautiful golden curls, soft blue eyes... And a complexion like rose-tinted ivory. Gee, I like him better than I do me. <laughs> I don't blame you. Now, let's see. Uh, hey, Jackson, yeah. what am I going to be in this tender and dripping love story? You, Phil, you're going to be the manager of Leslie Benny, this great concert violinist. Are my eyes going to be blue, too? No, Phil, just under your eyes, as usual. <laughs> now, let's see. Oh, yes, the very important role of the young accompanist so beautifully portrayed on the screen by that Swedish star, Miss Ingrid Bergman, will be enacted this evening by a discovery of our own, that very talented young actress, Miss Olivia Devance. <laughs> oh, Miss Devance. Here I am, Mr. Benny. Now, as you know, you're going to be my accompanist, and during our play, you fall madly in love with me. That won't be hard to do, kid. <laughs> well, thank you. Now, I understand you've had screen experience yourself. What was your last assignment? I was at Caboose in Union Pacific. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I remember you with that red and green light in your hair. Yeah. Now, here's your part. Go over in the corner and brush up on it. Thank you. And when do I get paid? I'll meet you downstairs right after the broadcast. I've got a date. So have I. I just want to pay you off. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> say. Now, our play intermezzo will go on immediately after a number by the orchestra. Go ahead, Phil. Play something. Hold it a minute. Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. Hello? Who? Yes, he's here. It's for you, Jack, at Ginsburg's restaurant. I must be Gladys. Hello? Hello, Gladys. How are you? Oh, they do? Well, why don't you soak them when you get home? <laughs> uh, that'll 
little help. Oh, her dogs are barking, eh? Mary, she's on her feet all day. What did you call me for, Gladys? Oh. Well, don't worry. I got five more votes for you today. Yes, only five. After all, Gladys, you've got competition. It's no sin. But, but Gladys. Now, wait a minute, Gladys. If you don't like the way I'm running your campaign, get Jim Farley. <laughs> what? Oh, now, honey, I didn't mean to... She's crying, fellas. I'm sorry, Gladys. I didn't mean to boil you out, but gosh, I... But Gladys, darling. But Gladys, baby. <laughs> but Gladys, honey. Try the disco. Quiet. <laughs> now, Gladys, will you please stop sniffling? You'll win the contest. You'll get that trip to Boulder Dam. <laughs> All right, honey, I'll drop by in a few minutes. See you later. Goodbye. Oh, by the way, Gladys... Will you put away a piece of banana cream pie for me? Last Sunday, you were all out. Thanks. And this, he goes to Leslie Howard. Okay, dear. Goodbye. What a sweet kid, but she's so sensitive. Play, Phil. Gee, I made her cry. by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our version of intermezzo. Take it, Don. Well, Jack, before I introduce the play, what does the word intermezzo mean? You see, I'm not musically inclined. Intermezzo? Well, Don, intermezzo is an Italian word. It's uh, from the Italian. It's a musical term, and it's, uh, it's from the Italian. <laughs> you said that. Mary, I'm trying to explain it. Intermezzo, Don, means, well, the word inter means between. For instance, interurban means between towns. So intermezzo means between mezzo. <laughs> you see? Well, yes, Jack, but what's a mezzo? Well, mezzo is a proper noun. It's hard to define. It's a name more than anything else. Like mezzo golden mare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, Mary, something like that. Now, wait a minute. An intermezzo is a musical term meaning an interlude or a chorus joining two parts of a major composition. Well, come to think of it, Phil, that's it exactly. Where'd you get that definition? I found it in the Chinese cookie. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm glad we've got it settled anyway. You may proceed, Don. Well, uh, thank you. The scene of our play, ladies and gentlemen, is the New York apartment of Mr. Leslie Benny, the internationally famous violinist, where he lives with his wife, Edna, and their little son, Pizzicato. <laughs> That's him, Pizzicato Benny. As the curtain rises, we find Mr. Benny practicing souvenir on his violin. Curtain music. Daddy! 
quiet, Pitsy. <laughs> what is it? Can I have a piece of rosin? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Here you are. Pitsy, what are you chewing that rosin for? I'm going to eat a banana in a minute, and I don't want it to slip. <laughs> oh. Well, run along now, Pitsy, and let Daddy practice. I'm preparing to leave for my concert tour. Okay. What a child. Oh, I don't like that. Hello, dear. Uh, where are you going with that mill? I'm taking in to Fifi the cat. Well, don't bother. I just played souvenir on her. <laughs> oh, Leslie, we can never keep a cat around here. Why don't you buy strings? Please don't annoy me, dear. I'm practicing for my concert tour. Oh, yes. Leslie, take me with you on this trip. Why can't I go along? Why? Little does she know that I'm in love with my beautiful blonde accompanist, Anita. Because, darling, it's a hard life. Trains, hotels, a constant rush and turmoil. You couldn't stand it. Oh, little does he know that he don't know that I know about you know. <laughs> but you promised that you'd take me with you. Some other time, dear. And incidentally, Edna, I wish you'd keep our son out of the room when I'm practicing. He bothers me dreadfully. Well, don't worry. He's gone to Central Park with his nurse. My goodness, has he still got that nurse? He's big enough now to hold her on his lap. <laughs> That's why they went to the park. <laughs> I see. Oh, Leslie, won't you change your mind about taking me with you? I'll think about it. Hmm, little does she know that my girlfriend is waiting for me in Paris. Little does he know that my boyfriend is under the sofa. <laughs> well, see you later, darling. Okay, sweet. Now, let's see. What music should I take along? I don't know whether to open with Tchaikovsky's and Dante Cantabile or Bugle Call Rag. <laughs> Now, if I open in Paris, I'll have to play. Come in. Telegram for Leslie Benny. Right here, boy. Wait a minute. Here's a quarter for you. Oh, gee, thanks. Little do you folks know this quarter says, Watch the coma grow on it. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder who could have sent me this telegram. Why, it's from Anita. Anita, she's waiting for me in Paris, Kentucky. I knew I should have told her France. I must wire immediately to meet me at the boat. The following day, Pier 65, North River. Well, goodbye, Pitsy. Now mind your mother and be a good little boy. Are you going to Paris, Daddy? Yes, Pitsy. You'll be a good little boy, too. <laughs> Pitsy. Well, goodbye, Edna. Goodbye, Leslie. I'll miss you terribly. Little does she know that Anita is waiting for me on the boat. I'll miss you, too. Little does he know that I put a dictaphone in his fiddle. <laughs> well, goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Oh, Leslie. Yes, Mr. Harris. We'd better get aboard. There isn't much time. I'm coming. Did you prepare my itinerary? Yes. Your route is as follows. The Opera House in Paris, the La Scala in Rome, the Grand Palace in Budapest, Albert Hall in London, Carnegie Hall in New York, and the Wiltshire Bowl. <laughs> the Wiltshire Bowl? What's that? That's the cultural center of Southern California no-cover charge. <laughs> oh. Come, Mr. Harris, we must hurry. Goodbye, Edna. Goodbye, Pizzicato. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> So Leslie Benny, the great virtuoso, starts out on his concert tour. First, we find him at the Opera House in Paris. Ouch! With the tomato yet. Oh, well. Rome, Italy! Ouch! Sacramento! Oh, well. Budapest, Hungary. I gotta catch a train, folks. London, England. 
Dollars. <laughs> My fair lady. Oh. <laughs> well, I nearly made it. Waukegan, Illinois. Thank you, thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Leslie Benny finishes his concert tour at Carnegie Hall in New York City. And we find him in the dressing room of his accomplice, getting ready for his final appearance of the season. Anita, Anita, just think this is my last concert. And these have been the happiest months of my life. Have they, kid? <laughs> <laughs> and it's you, Anita, only you, who has made all this possible. I love you, Anita. More than ever. Do you, kid? <laughs> oh, Anita, tell me that you love me, too. I wish I could, but things have changed in the last few weeks, and my heart belongs to another. To another? Who is it? Mr. Harris, your manager. Harris, my closest friend. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's true, kid. <laughs> Then this is the end. I'm going out and find Harris. And when I do, heaven help him. Where's my hat? In the closet. Oh. I don't see it. Here you are, kid. <laughs> Harris, I should have known that you turn out to be the rat you are. Goodbye. Farewell, Anita. So long, kid. <laughs> <laughs> to think that Anita would treat me like this. In five minutes, I am due to appear before my public. But I shall never play my violin again. Never, never. Leslie, Leslie, darling. Edna, my wife, what are you doing here? I thought you needed me, Leslie. I could sense that something was wrong. Oh, I love you, Leslie. Come back to me. My little wife, I love you too, and I shall never leave you again. Where's Pizzicato, our son? In the hospital, he ate too much rosin. <laughs> oh, I knew it would get him. Well, Edna, I'm so glad you came. You've given me new life, new spirit. And I'm going out on that stage and play my violin as I've never played before. I know you will. Good luck, kid. Thanks, kid. <laughs> so Leslie Benny walked out on the stage of the vast Carnegie Hall. A hush fell over the audience. The lights dimmed. Leslie raised his violin to his chin, and the orchestra played the introduction to the meditation from Thais by Massenet. <laughs> in thousands of homes these days is Jell-O fruit cup, served either as an appetizer or dessert. Just imagine a shining sherbet glass heaped high with bright, sunny orange Jell-O, tenderly molded around colorful cubes of juicy, ripe fruit. Now there's something your family will surely enjoy, and something you'll enjoy making. Or here's how easy it is. First, dissolve one package of orange Jell-O in one pint of hot water. Chill until slightly thickened, and fold in two-thirds of a cup each of diced oranges, diced apples, and finely cut dates. Then mold, and there you have it. An enticing combination of brilliant orange jello and delicious fresh fruit. So tomorrow night at dinner, delight the whole family with this tempting jello creation with its gay colors and rich, tangy fruit flavor. Jello Fruit Cup. <laughs> the last number of the 15th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. We, meanwhile, on behalf of my cast, my authors, and myself, I want to thank the radio editors of the United States and Canada for the honors accorded us in the recent New York World Telegram poll. Can you imagine, folks, Don Wilson was voted the best announcer, and I had to play my violin all through his commercial. Oh, well, good night, folks. <laughs> this is the National Broadcasting Company.